morning guys privileged to be here to share my thoughts and my belief what i have seen from the time i have been in the wilderness when i was a kid i would say i was privileged for a simple fact that i could go into wilderness by just taking my cycle or walk because i belong to a very small town in madhya pradesh I, if i go 1 km i am inside the jungle and i can go there watch squirrels deer sometimes leopards sit near the river and enjoy the whole wilderness i was beaten up by mother multiple times because i was beyond the time limit it was given to me it was told to me that i should leave those places by 6 o'clock but i just could not leave and then i reach home back and then uh, somebody will inform my mother that rohit was seen in this part of the jungle and then obviously what will happen at home you are very well aware of it but yes that was my connection with the wilderness started off when i was a kid and then uh, obviously the pressure of education and deciding about career and uh, figure, figure out your life that's how i got into bangalore in 97 and my connection with the wilderness was broken there was a time came when one day i was frustrated or i just was looking for some peace so i just took out my vehicle and i drove down towards bandipur and that's where i felt that okay this is what was missing for so many years in my life which was nature and then my life of shooting wilderness and showing the wilderness to the world started off so let me just give you some stories or some of the images what i have captured this image was shot uh, in the month of july this is a male great indian hornbill and this is the parenting because if you see the image you will see a slit the female and the chick is inside that slit male job is to go and get the food every one hour and the female and the chick uh, say female will be there inside that hole for 30 to 50 days every one hour this male will land on a tree near to this hole watch around when when he sees that there is nobody to uh, bother he will go feed and he'll go off i was just standing there and watching him there are many times when i just could not pick up the camera because it was such a lovely to watch the behavior itself this is just a reference image this guy i spent almost 4 days in a place in sri lanka in velpattu he will walk in at 10 o'clock sharp get from one area of the lake and then he will whole day spend enjoying the fresh grass water and at 5 o'clock he will go out he will do one sand bath and he's out i was very lucky to get this beautiful bird this is saras crane this is endemic to india i was doing some work in delhi and my work got over so i decided to go to bharatpur i went there it was harsh sun around 2 o'clock in the afternoon and i saw the pair you will always find them in pair so slowly i started walking towards them and this image was actually shot at 2 o'clock in the afternoon so you will not see the harsh lights but it's such a beautiful bird when you see the behavior is amazing leopards i've heard so many stories about the leopards leopards there is no proper census has been done in india but we are losing leopards and when you watch them their behavior how smart they are how cunning they are they know how to survive in any habitat you talk about any place you will find them everywhere you may even find them very close to bangalore itself oh this is another interesting story which i recently experienced as recent as 29th of last month i was shooting and then i saw the serpent eagle juvenile serpent eagle continuously calling and the call was just going on then i could hear the response coming from the mother now this guy was hungry and he was looking for a food mother was calling him but he doesn't want to go just like kids they do just want to go mother comes she lands on a ground with a frog this guy has to go down to pick up the frog and he goes back once again this is behavior so when you are in the wilderness it teaches you lot i mean you just sit and you start looking at the way they are behaving it the way the whole habitat is functioning or the whole ecology is functioning is just amazing is serene now this is one of my favorite place uh, in kobet and dikala i just love to shoot elephants 
So whenever I get a chance, and if it is elephant, I will go for that. This is uh, Bara Singha. You find them in Central India, specifically in Kanha National Park and in Northeast. This is the time when they have dropped their antlers. But you look at the velvet, it's beautiful. A window of two minutes to get a tiger. And fortunately, the light was just falling on his one eye, and I could get the shot. This is how our nature is. It's beautiful. Tall trees, these are salt trees, and you see the whole gore sitting and relaxing there. This is a sunrise. I am sure everybody would like to get up in the morning and see this kind of a sunrise. It's serene, it's just beautiful, it's enchanting. I would say it's life, it, it's, it's within us. And this is our city. This is what we have created. That most of the uh, calamities, as we call it, natural calamities, they are not natural calamities. They are infused by us. So whatever is happening, somewhere there is a human interference and because of, those, because of that, those things are happening. So talk about having a flood coming in an area, you look at the reasons, either we have built up a dam or we have changed the way the, the water was flowing. Because of that, the floods are coming in. So look at the barren land. Why it has been done? Maybe somebody wanted to build up a factory there or we needed more land for the cultivation because the population has gone so high. We need so much of more grains and crops. So we finish off the forest. And when nature responds, this is what happens. These were the lush forests once upon a time. Our requirements are not in our control. We are just not able to understand that how the theory of sustainability is getting defeated because today if you have more money, you will abuse. You means including me. We will abuse. We are not bothered. We are all educated. We all know it. We still go ahead and do the same thing again and again. That's the reality. It's just not there. And the reason why it is not there is because somewhere that sense, that feeling is not there. Believe me, I have seen people hitting on a road in a jungle at a high speed. What's the need? I, I don't see. You can go at a slower speed, enjoy the wilderness, enjoy the animals, look at the behavior. No, we speed up. And this is what happens. This is for ivory. Means I don't know what are you going to do with that ivory. Can you eat it? What do you want for? Why do you want to kill? For what? I just can't understand. Same things, road kills. This everybody would have seen it. This is Bangalore. Nice road. Speedy vehicle, kill the leopard. Somewhere, we are not conscious. Somewhere, we are not connected. The first image is Chandrapur and second image is uh, Kudremukh. But the amount of mining which is happening, the elements have moved in. And because of that, you will see animal and human conflict happening. So, we lose 7.3 million hectares of forest every year. That's a huge number. Why forest is so important? The air what we are breathing right now, are we paying for it? Forest, trees, they absorb the carbon dioxide and give you oxygen and you're not paying for that oxygen. That's the reason forest is so important for you. Talk about water. If there is no forest, there are no rains. You will not be able to get it. If you are able to get river water at your home, you are just paying for the distribution. You are not paying for the water. In reality, our survival depends on nature. We need to understand this. And how does it affect forest in a day? Switch on the light where the power is coming from. It's coming from fossil fuel. Largely, power comes from a fossil fuel. Similar way, you had a breakfast, cereal which you had. You had maybe milk. Maybe that cow has gone to graze in a forest. That's how you are able to have the milk. Newspaper. You know how the newspaper comes out. So, it, it affects you directly, indirectly. The problem what I see is, we take this as two different worlds. So-called wildlife world and civilized world. As for me, it's one world. As per everybody, it's a one world. And which we need to understand it very, very clearly. If we understand that, we start appreciating it. So, all these animals, all these subjects, these are very important for the ecology. It's very, very important for all of us. And as we have a right to be in this earth, they have equal right to be on this earth. I started this initiative with another friend of mine. Uh, that's called Nature in Focus. The idea is very simple. I want more and more people to get closer to nature. 
So I will do anything and everything to get more and more people getting closer to nature so they start appreciating the nature. When you start appreciating the nature, you will start doing things to conserve the nature. Simple. We have a habit of passing on the buck. So we love to say, okay, this is not my job, it's somebody else's job. So we say, okay, conservation job of our NGO, government organizations, forest department, research organizations. But no, it, it's our responsibility. We are part of the ecology, we are part of the world. So we have to own our responsibility. So how can we make a difference? So this is one thought which I had is individual conservation responsibility. How can we contribute? It's very simple and doable. Believe that you can make the difference. Number two, own it. It's very, very critical. Water, fuel, power, plant, green cover. These are the factors which we can talk about. So half a flush to save the water. So I was talking to a colleague of mine. I said, do you know the fund of half a flush? Do you know how much we flush it out? When you just go to loo, we flush it out easily five to eight liters of water. But if you just cut it down, your water consumption will come down. Yeah, for me, it's a slightly different thing because when I'm in a forest, I may not need so much of water. But we can really, really cut down on the usage of the water. So if one lakh people decides to follow this, you'll be able to save 36.5 crore liters of water. In the last seven years, on the funda of half a flush, I think I would have saved around 50 or 1,000 liters of water. In a similar way, four kilometers walk to save the earth. The funda is very simple. Wherever you can walk, just walk. The normal consumption, what we do is almost 80 liters in a month. You cut down by 10% and you will see the difference happening. Big time difference happening. Difference in terms of saving money, talk about car life, talk about less power, less pollution, less traffic, and a healthy life. So it is doable, it's possible, it's in our hand. It's just a call which you have to take it. So my whole, I will sum it up in two words is cautious and conscious. If we are cautious, if we are conscious, we can surely make the difference. That's the message which I would like to pass on. And in the end, we will conserve only what we love. We will love what we understand. And we understand what's been taught to us. Thank you.